<clears throat> Good evening, everybody. I call this meeting to order for July the 4th, or, sorry, July the 4th, 2023, regular meeting. Result of the agenda for the July 4th, 2023, regular meeting of council be adopted. Moved by Councilor Medwood, seconded by Councilor Wojciak. All in favor? Okay. Oh, sorry. Did you have something? Um, yes. Okay. I believe today is supposed to be the first day we start with uh, Councilor Privilege, but I did not notice it on the agenda when I went through it. Is that something that's supposed to appear on the agenda? No, that's correct. It did not get added to our. Okay, so then we can yeah, maybe Kelsey. add that near the. That was supposed to be at the end, I think. Yeah, yeah at the 15 end. After notice when sure. Yes. Okay, so we can add that. Uh, Deputy Mayor Morio. Uh, I would like to add an HR issue to in camera, please. Okay. Okay, for the discussion, all in favor? It's carried. Result of the minutes of the June 20th, 2023 regular council meeting be approved. Moved by Councilor Edward, seconded by Councilor Favic. Any discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Receptions and delegations. Under this part here, I have uh, two special awards. Uh, on the June twenty second AMM Parkland District meeting, our president, AMM president Cam Blight, uh, had uh, awarded um, Councillor Don Bobick for his ten years of service as an elected official, and the town of Swan River also does recognize this as well. I'd like to commend Councillor Bobick for his integrity, always ready. Uh, being ready to express how he feels, his contributions, particularly in the utility and the transportation departments, has served his constituents of the town as a whole very well. He, his engaged demeanor on council and experience he brings to the table uh, shall continue to be an asset as long as he carries his seat. I congratulate you, Councilor Bobick, for your 10 years of service. <laughs> On the same day, uh, we had the, uh, the privilege to, uh, to hear uh, President Cam Blight also make a huge announcement, and that was to our former mayor, uh, Glenn McKenzie, and his acceptance to the Association of Manitoba Municipalities as a lifetime member. Glenn started his service with the town of Swan River as a councillor in 1988 through 1995. That year, he was elected as mayor of the town of Swan River and he held that position until 2018. During his 30-year tenure, Glenn was a pioneer of the first TLE agreement with Sapatoyak Cree Nation in 2012, which has led to multiple development agreements within the town limits with our First Nation partners, and has recognized Swan River as leaders among our municipal uh, community. Mr. McKenzie has been recognized by his peers as a mentor from fellow politicians to staff members, his leadership style and goals to view opinions openly have led to the formation of the Valleywide G7. This collaborative effort has created a number of committees for the medical service re uh, recruitment and retention to rise. In recognition of his community contributions, Mr. McKenzie received the Queen Elizabeth II Diamond Jubilee Award in 2012. He has initiated multiple re recreation, utility, economic development, transportation projects, 
making positive impacts for the residents of the town of Swan River. It is my pleasure to recognize here in the council that Glenn McKenzie has been accepted as an honorary lifetime member of the Association of Manitoba Municipalities representing the town of Swan River and on, also on behalf of our president, Cam Blight. Congratulations, Glenn. Just one picture. <laughs> Speech. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate uh, the award coming from AMM. Thank the council here for nominating me. Uh, for the most part, I enjoyed all my time on council. And uh, I think that the key to it was the people I worked with. Uh, we had great counselors great administrators, and uh, it made my job pretty easy over the years. And we accomplished a lot of things, and I think back to all the things that we've done. I even noticed that, and uh, congratulate Councillor Blobbit. Uh, he must have known his was coming because he was in the bar shop getting the hair. Anyway, yeah. I go back and I think of, I'm trying to think of all the things that we've done in the past, TRE thing comes to mind because that, that was ongoing for quite a while and uh, the outcome uh, was pretty satisfactory. Absolutely. Also, uh, the work we through AMM, uh, I can congratulate all the counselors, some of them are here, some of them aren't here anymore, of attending the AMM conventions. And everybody always thought it was just a big party to go to AMM, but I can honestly say that I can see none of our counselors ever missed a session. It, we would get together uh, after the morning session and we'd divide up all the breakouts and we'd try to cover as many as we could. Uh, when everything was over in the day, then maybe let loose a little bit and there a few tricks pulled on me at some of the conventions. <laughs> uh, I think the key to any council is having everybody get along. And I think that was our, one of the big things that helped us was we bought that van. Before that, everybody would go with their own car to conventions and things. But once we bought the van, then you have to sit with those people in the van for four hours or whatever so we can't be able to get along with them. But thank you very much for the award and I wish you as a council all the very much success in the future. You know, sometimes it's not easy and you're never going to be able to please everybody but you do what you can and it's democracy and the majority will rule. Great. Thank you again. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. I have to say that too. I forgot to thank my family, my wife especially, and the kids, the amount of time they spent without me around. It might have been a good thing, but attending meetings and going to conference things, it puts a real strain on the family. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Number six, uh, communications, 6.1. Result of the building permits 2423 through 3323 with a total estimated value of $647,265 be received. Moved by Councilor Edward, seconded by Councilor Powell. Discussion, uh, Councilor Medwood, do you have anything to open with? Any, any other further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 7, 7.1. Resolve that the Director of Public Works be, report be received, moved by Councilor Medwood, seconded by Councilor Bobbick. Discussion, Councilor Medwood? 
Um, Director Harvey, how are we doing with the line painting? My question in particular is the quality of paint. Because I noticed some rework was done in the Taylor School area. Yeah, and it's been driven over and already kind of looking faded. So I'm thinking it's the quality of the product that's being used. Uh, it is a different supplier than we used last year, so I can take a look at that and we can look at that in the future. Um, I know that area was redone because it was rained on, mm -hmm. but I can look at, uh, definitely take a look at the paint and see what it looks like. Thank you. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Uh, 7.2, 7 point, or oh, sorry, uh, yeah, I guess 7.3, Council Reports. We shall begin with Councillor Bobbitt. What's the meaning of your report, Your Worship? Thank you. Okay. Councillor uh, Boychuk. Um, well, we had Canada Day, our first Canada Day. Uh, I'd like to shout out to uh, Phil Friesen, who definitely did a lot of work helping us uh, pull that one off. And to Councillor White Powell, uh, Mayor Jacobson, and Deputy Mayor Morio for all your wonderful scooping capabilities there. It was great, very hot. Um, it was nice to see everybody out and about there. Uh, I've heard good things about Minotonuses and Bonitos as well, so glad everybody had a good show for uh, Canada Day. Uh, since the last meeting, I attended a fire board meeting. Um, we attended the AMM Parkland District meeting in Roblin. And I just want to say congratulations to all the 2023 graduates out there and to the individuals who put on the golf bonanza. I've heard nothing but great things about it. And that wraps me up. Okay. Deputy Mayor Morio. Um, since last meeting, uh, I attended uh, the Prairie Mountain Health Stakeholders uh, meeting on the 21st. Uh, where we brought up a number of uh, healthcare issues towards the board and waiting some responses on how we can assist on some staffing issues that they have at the hospital, mostly particularly to the uh, closure of the 10, uh, or temporary closure of 10 PCH beds here due to staffing and how we can assist them on getting that forward to bring them back up. That eating, uh, evening, uh, along with uh, CEO Poole and Councillor Boychuk, we met with Swan Valley West. Uh, for another round of four fire board discussions and council was briefed on that last week at the cow meeting and we're just waiting on some additional information uh, regarding uh, reserves and feedback from Swan Valley West as from our last meeting. On the 22nd uh, we had uh, a number of councillors attended the June District AMM meeting in Roblin uh, which was good to see councillors uh, from the rest of the district there. Uh, we also had a networking and also the two resolutions, or I should say three, along with the one we supported with Dauphin regarding the RCMP, uh, all passed the June district uh, meetings. So that will be moving on towards the fall convention for consideration there. Uh, the CAO uh, meeting last week and assisted uh, with the rest of the council and other folks at the Kennedy uh, celebrations at the park. And great job to the team that put that on, and great fireworks show this year. Thank you very much. Councillor uh, Powell. <clears> hey, <throat> so um, yes, we attended that AMM, as I've already said. It was a great turnout and lots of great information that was presented. Um, we also attended Canada Day, which was really great. Um, lots, of, lots of people in attendance. It was nice to see. But I have also heard that uh, Minnetonis as well it was a great turnout, and they were very busy there too. Um, we attended the cow meeting. Um, um, I also attended the library board. There's lots happening at the library here in, in Swan River. Um, there's, there's carpets being redone, so there's lots of kind of renovations going on. A few days of produce, but I'm hoping to be back to normal in the next couple of weeks for sure. Um, we've also uh, made some changes over in Benito, and and they're moving to five open five days a week. So that's something new for them, and I think it'll be great for the summertime. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Also, White. Yeah. Well, first, I'm glad to be back. I uh, spent some time at White Arts with our family and sort of missed our team. And uh, it's important to me to be. This live stuff was so far better than the, the midi Zoom I attended. 
So I appreciate uh, the support of our group. Uh, just uh, in the medical professional services agenda, uh, one of the things that the team has been talking about is uh, looking at better ideas to retain medical professionals and uh, we'll work on that. We've asked for um, Brandon Stock to come and talk about uh, healthcare aides, where they fit in the picture if we were funding what we're doing funding completely embryonic. We've asked for one of the psych nurses to come and tell us about the needs of psychiatric nurses in our community. And just recently, thanks to uh, Deputy Mayor Morio, uh, I had the pleasure of filling out some forms to give a, a significant financial incentive to one of our physician assistants who signed on with PMA. It's a little late, but uh, that's a work in progress. So I want to thank you, David, uh, for making that happen. Uh, the Canada Day, I, I think it's imperative to acknowledge the Immigrant Services Committee, uh, led by Jillian McGrath, who had so many people there from so many different cultures and community, and it was just a pleasure to, to be part of that process with them. So uh, kudos go well to, uh, to Jillian and her team. And, uh, and Councillor Boychuk, you and uh, your team, uh, they're always fun, but it was really fun. I just wish it had ended a little earlier in the evening, but uh, it was a good job you did leading us and uh, setting an example of, uh, you don't sit around much, do you? <laughs> it was always zoom, zoom, and, and, and I appreciate that so much. And I want to, uh, we, we have some numbers coming, but the uh, Cal Park Golf Tournament was very successful, and uh, I, I'm not privy to what those numbers would be, but they will be significant. The funds, I think 20% of their net was going to go to uh, the CT scan. <coughs> so I want to thank publicly Cal Tire and their team for the work they've done too. So that's it. Thank you. Okay. Councilman <coughs> uh, uh, I also attended the AMM district meeting. Uh, found it was well, very useful, productive. Uh, first district meeting I attended. I helped out at the golf fundraiser for a couple hours. So. Uh, did my part there, uh, attended the cow meeting, and I think that pretty much covers uh, everything I've uh, done from the last meeting. Uh, thank you to everyone who uh, made Canada Day happen. I was uh, busy in a tractor, so uh, <laughs> didn't get to join you, but uh, thank you for making it happen. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, for myself, you know, the, the AMM district uh, meeting that we had um, for Parkland, uh, it, was, it was a good meeting and, 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 and if you have any feedback as far as what you, any takeaways, especially the breakout session that we did where we had the, uh, the questionnaires, I have to say that uh, amongst the whole group, and I'm, maybe I, my opinion is a little bit weighted to town of Swan River, but I thought our, our team uh, did a really good job on uh, the questions and, uh, and, and and presented it very well. So, but uh, it's something that the AMM is thinking about. I think doing you know, a little bit more on a regular basis to get a little bit more uh, input from uh, the delegates and councillors and so forth. So, if there's any feedback or, or any ideas, you know, let me know about that. Canada Day, uh, you know, we talked about that lots, you know, and, and yeah, it was it was a good day. We still have some things to grow on that, but uh, councillor. Uh, Boyd Chuck, you did a you did an outstanding job that day, and and it's hard to take over from uh, former councillor Friesen, who uh, we didn't realize how much uh, she was taken away with her. But you will get there, and uh, we'll keep working on. It. But the day was outstanding, and if it means anything, my son said that those were uh, better uh, fireworks than what we had last year. So anyway, that's uh, and I've heard that actually from a few other people too. So anyway, so that's it with me. We'll move on to uh, the sales report. I do have a, a written short report. Uh, just a couple items. The rec director advertisement has gone out. So just the rec committee expects uh, some, a summary of changes <clears throat> from the last go. Uh, protective services committee, uh, just mark a date for July 12th at 12.30 till 2. The, the feds are having an information session regarding our uh, police contract. What day was it? July 12th, 12.30 till 2. That would be uh, the promised meetings they had when we, you and I attended Winnipeg? Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah, so short notice, but... Uh, Sorry, what was the time on that again? Uh, 12.30 till 2. 12.30 to 2? Yeah. And setting up our inaugural meeting with the <coughs> contractor for the community well-being project, the pilot project that the province approved for us. Uh, that will happen on July 19th, and we're just, we're just starting to get uh, those dates out. And tax notices are out and payments are coming in. That's it. Okay. Anything from any councillor on um, uh, on the items here? Councillor Medwood. Um, yes, if you can just refresh my memory. You had mentioned that with this new round of recruitment for the rec director, you were going to uh, circulate the advertisement to a different demographic or a different... Yeah, we're, we're not going to advertise in the papers in Saskatchewan like we did before. But we are paying uh, more for uh, our online advertisements so that if a rec director position is searched, we go to the top. So we're, we're paying for that service for the, the online recruitment programs in the work office. Okay. And I maybe misheard, but was it mentioned the idea of circulating it to um, post-secondary schools that offer like recreation programming to see if there's any way of circulating through through them? Yeah, we've sent it to the U of M and as well as Recreation Manitoba. Okay. As well. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? All right. Thank you. Uh, eight eight point one. Resolve that administration initiate the process for the demolition and cleanup of property located on 3466 6th Avenue, South Rule Number 122300.000. Moved by Councillor Medwood, seconded by Councillor Powell. Discussion, Councillor Medwood. I have a couple questions that will actually pertain to both. Um, First one being, do we have the funds budgeted initially for covering the costs for the demolition? I know ultimately it'll get transferred to the property owner, but do we have the budgeting? No. Okay. So technically how it was supposed to work is the work is done, the bill goes to the property owner, we don't budget for it because we assume, right, bad, bad choice of words, but um, we assume that every property owner would take re responsibility of the properties and pay their bills. And therefore, eventually at some point in time, if that property owner does not pay that bill, then it will end up going to tax sale. Okay, so if we put out an RFP, and I'm just trying to understand the process because I'm new to this, if we put out a request for quotes, I guess is what it actually is, and council makes the decision to move forward on one of those quotes, that invoice then gets forwarded to the property owner first, and if they don't pay by the due date, then the town pays it, or well, does the town pay it, and then we invoice the property owner? That way. The second way. The second way? Okay. So at some point, it might be coming to the table to talk about where the money is going to come from? Yeah, te technically it goes on their taxes. So if you, if you don't pay your taxes for two years, you, you enter into the tax sale process. If you continue to not pay those, we, we get that property and then we will have to pay as we write that off as bad debt. But ultimately the taxpayers pay. Okay. So if, if it goes that far, we would, as the mayor said, uh, expect people to pay their bills. Another thing council should know that didn't make this uh, decision paper is we do have a uh, building permits on both these properties. Uh, so the owner has suggested that he wants to renovate. So we, we've had meetings with the building inspector, the fire chief, myself, and the public works director. And when we're not going to stop our process, we'll still continue to get quotes. But when we do receive those quotes, council receive a report of the chronological, I guess, history of, of what's been done on those properties, just to, so that you can make an informed decision. 
Mr. Ganita, do you want to comment on any of the conversation that we've had? No. Okay. For the discussion? Okay, one more. Okay. Um, the wording in the initial letter said we wouldn't commence our process until June 31st. Is there any legal recourse for the fact that June 31st doesn't exist? Uh, I, it does actually hold June 30th as the official date for them to have taken action. Right. I, I think that's a pretty, it, it's a clear typo, very clear, but I think it, it's a fair typo that, you know, give or take a day, we'll extend this whole process a day if we have to. But uh, no, I don't see that being a legal issue. Okay. I just, just to make in sure. the future, we know that you know, we'll double check I, our dates. I just want to make sure before we start doing things and then find out after the fact that... Um, yeah. What's your next... You have to have another question? Uh, no, that's it. Oh, God, Other than just to forward. confirm, sorry. Just to confirm, so what we're voting on right now today is just to proceed with the requests for quotes? That's correct. Okay. Okay, for the discussion, all in favor? Carried. Eight point two. Resolve that the administration initiate the process for demolition and cleanup of property located at three twenty five Fifth Avenue South, roll number nine zero two zero zero dot triple zero. Moved by Councillor Medwood, seconded by Councillor Boychuk. Discussion. Councillor Medwood, you will speak in favor of the resolution. I asked all my questions, but the last one is the same okay. thing. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 8.3. Whereas the town of Swan River and the RCMP jointly applied for a grant of $140,605.76 through the Criminal Property Forfeiture Program to be used for the Community Surveillance Project, and whereas the Manitoba government has granted the town of Swan River $50,000, which is insufficient for the full scale of the project. Therefore, be it resolved the town of Swan River use the Crime Prevention Reserve to further argument the uh, funding for the community surveillance project. Moved by Councillor Medwood, seconded by Councillor Bobbick. Discussion? <laughs> Councillor Bobbick. So the crime prevention funds that we've put away for this is going to be totally spent on just cameras alone? Is that what I'm reading here? Not that I can read it on the internet, but... The, the, the yes. Yes. That's what it says unless you feel differently, but yes. So would council entertain the fact that some of the ideas that the chamber has come up with with the vehicle would be partially included in this as then instead of taking the whole works and putting it in to uh, the camera system that we split the difference and go with 50-50. Uh, I'm just using numbers for saying. I guess my idea or my thoughts on this I should say is where would these cameras be? would be mostly in the business district that we can't tell a camera to go to the cemetery and look at night what's going on there whereas a vehicle we can so that's I guess my interest towards that. So. That would only mean that you would want to have a, an amendment to the resolution. Correct. Okay. Councillor White. Yeah but the ambiguity concerns me it says to use to further augment to what degree further augment and I think Councillor Bob could bang on in my mind are we further on using the whole 50,000 or 25,000, which I'd be more likely to support, but when there's no number there, I'm a little, uh, a little concerned. Okay, Councilor Boycha. Um, just speaking towards the criminal property forfeiture grant, I believe that the funding for that, we have to expend the $50,000 first, and then you'll get that funding back from them through their process, and it could take some time, so. I think that was the initial kind of um, incentive for 
putting it towards that project. I believe it's not only going to go to cameras, but there's going to be the installation, and then there'll be the setup of the base, so there'll be desks, chairs, TVs, and, and things like that. So it's not only cameras, um, but a good portion of it would likely be towards that. Just the little bit I do know or can add to that. Okay, go ahead. Um, yes, this is a resolution or a motion that I had asked a couple weeks ago on the notice of motion to come forward uh, after we uh, dealt with the initial motion or resolution to provide the $50,000 from the uh, Crime Prevention Reserve to the Chamber of Commerce. Um, with this, it doesn't say an exact amount as for the entire amount. Uh, I'd be willing to um, put forward an amendment that I'd say $10,000 go to the Chamber for them to buy a used vehicle and the remainder 40000 goes to the community surveillance project. So I'd be amenable to uh, make moving that motion forward for that. So you want to make it a, you know, uh, wanted to make an amendment to? I move to make an amendment to this, yes. Okay. So there's two different ways to make the amendment. There's a friendly amendment that has to be agreed by the mover and the seconder. The mover is Councillor Medwood and the seconder was Councillor Bobbitt. Well, my personal thoughts are is we've already decided on the community patrol. But, we, but we're, we're asking the question on the amendment, so you have to make a decision on whether or not you agree to the amendment. I wouldn't because okay. we've already voted so fine. So you, in so opposition. So you disagree. So that would mean then, we, uh, in order to uh, move forward with that, then you make a motion to uh, move uh, the amendment, and then you need a seconder. I so make the motion to make the amendment to uh, clarify or add that uh, 40,000 goes to the community services project and $10,000 to the Chamber of Commerce for the community uh, vehicle project. Okay. And Council White has a uh, second death. So then there is no debate, we vote. Okay, so all in favor of the amendment? It's carried. So then we need to vote on this after the amendment. So you're going to fix that? Yeah. Okay, so just give it a minute. Refresh. Okay. Do you want me? Do you want me to do? So we have <coughs> therefore be resolved. The town of Swanover used forty thousand dollars towards a community surveillance project and ten thousand towards a uh, chamber of commerce. Uh, p uh, patrol vehicle proposal from the Crime Prevention Reserve. Um, further discussion? All in favor? C uh, Council Medwood? I have a comment, yeah. Okay, go ahead. Um, just to say that I don't really agree with it because Council had already voted down the proposal for the community patrol vehicles, so 
I'm not really seeing the validity in splitting the, the funds and coming back to this um, previous proposal, and yeah. that's my opinion. Okay. Um, for the discussion, go ahead. I think the original one was voting down like the whole entire 50000 going towards that project. I think. Uh, that was my take, but okay. For the discussion, all in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Okay, where are we here? 8.4. Result of the signing officers for the Swan Valley Employment and Training Project uh, accounts at the Swan Valley Credit Union be Sarah Sackle, Derek Poole, and Terrence Ganita, and the two signatures or online approvals be required for all transactions. Moved by Councilor Medwood, seconded by Councilor Boychuk. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 8.5. Result of the Town of Swan River allow the intermittent closer, closure of the following public road allowance for the demolition of the structure currently <coughs> occupying 124 Fifth Avenue South, the 100 block of Fifth Avenue South between the east and west back alley and first street south as shown on the supplied map provided that the contractor give advance notice of 24 hours to the town administration and first street south between the fourth avenue south and fifth avenue south including the intersection of fifth avenue south and first street south as provided on the supplied map provided that the contractor give advance notice of one hour to town administration moved by Councillor Medwood, seconded by Councillor Boychuk. Discussion, Councillor White. Do you see a timeline in there? Uh, yes, I believe July 10th he is going to start. Pardon me? Next Monday, July 10th. A timeline for how long to do the project? Uh, they estimate less than 10 days. Thank you. Councillor Medwood. I have a few questions. Um, is this road closure for the duration of the demolition or just at certain points? It's intermittent, so whenever the contractor requires it. And how is this going to impact ACE and their business? Because their main entrance and only entrance for customers is on Fifth Avenue South. They, we, we did allow them uh, to close down 5th, but they, we, we did put an incentive that they only need one hour notice if they use 1st Street. They need a full day's notice because of ACE if they want to use 5th. So the incentive is there for him to use 1st as much as possible, and he'll, he'll be, you know, we'll let him know that. But in the case that he absolutely needs it in order to get it done, we will close down 5th. We strongly advise that he use first whenever he can. And have we communicated with ACE about this coming down the pipe in the near future just so they can make potentially once, alternate arrangements? Once this year? resolution would be passed and we would uh, advise ACE That's of what was happening. At that time? Okay. Yeah. Because yeah. no yeah. decision has been made yet. So. Okay. No, fair enough. Just so they have some heads up so they can prepare for it if needed. Okay. For the discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 8.6. Result of the expenditure of $13,946.01 including tax for the listed changes for the 2024 acres vortex be paid uh, for by use of the fire truck replacement reserve fund. Moved by Councillor Medwood, seconded by Councillor White. Discussion, Councillor Medwood. A couple questions. Uh, the 13,000 plus that we're talking about, <coughs> where does that put us in our overall final price on this fire truck? This is a complete addition to what was passed for, for in December. So the fire chief is asking for an extra 13,946 from the reserve to cover this uh, equipment that is needed on the truck. Go ahead. Um, then what comes to mind for me is are these wants versus needs? 
And are these things that could be added after the sale, should the Fire Board Commission choose to go and expend those expenses? Um, uh, I, I got notification that the fire chief was sick and he wouldn't be attending the meeting. I do have a sheet in my email uh, that explains this. I don't know if Council Moore has that breakdown. Uh, uh, go ahead. Um, to the question that this, the changes um, are required during the build, they can't be added after, and the changes are uh, to additional safety um, equipment put onto it that wasn't available or not included in the actual tender that was not uh, available at that time. So, so there was a credit uh, of some of five thousand dollars that was taken off the price um, for stuff that wasn't needed when the contractor or the builder came and did a in-person build discussion with the fire chief uh, that was deemed that it didn't need. So we were given a five thousand dollar credit off our bill, and then there was the change orders um, that's normally within capital projects that go through uh, for that they're made available um, to apparatus or things that are being built um, if you want or interested that can be added to the build when it's being built even though it wasn't maybe not available and some of these were not available at the time as it was quoted so these are additional safety features um, that protect uh, the firefighters uh, by adding an extra layer of safety uh, for like slip resistance instead of chrome bumpers it's a black powder coat type thing that's adds more um, a ladder instead of climbing different uh, to climb up on the truck um, various things like that uh, an upgrade instead of climbing up on the truck to uh, manhandle uh, the water gun it's done by a remote um, control type deal instead of having uh, two people operate the truck or an individual climbing up and down the truck all the time it's done from ground level or relocating hoses instead of coming from the side discharge where the operator is to remove uh, trip hazards by moving it to a different section of the truck um, to provide uh, greater uh, safety to the operators and the firefighters. So. Council White. Uh, just to support uh, Deputy Mayor Morials, I had a meeting with the Chief today and he explained those issues with me. And uh, I think a little different about firefighting than perhaps street cleaning or other things that are also important. And I think when it comes to protecting our, com our community as a whole, these are needs, these aren't wants. Okay, for the discussion, Councilor Bobbitt. I guess my question is why are we using the reserve when, when we take a loan to buy the fire truck? Wouldn't that be part of the loan? Because it's over and above. We all have a map. We can't increase our borrowing. We pass it. We have to do another borrowing balance. So we're over and above what we decided on. Go ahead. Uh, the borrowing bond lies up to nine hundred thousand, so this would still fall within oh, that's that. That's true. That is um, So yes, sir. it's just that we have the money in the reserve, so to keep the amount of borrowing the venture as low as possible, we can um, use this from the existing reserve. Um, and then same thing when it comes to pay the, the final invoice, we can apply reserve monies to it also at the end uh, to reduce the amount of the venture. That's correct. So, so I guess my thoughts on that, if we deplete the reserve fund and there's something in the future comes up, what do we do then, borrow? Mm -hmm. That's the decision of council at that time. Any further discussion? Go ahead. Well, to answer Councilor Bob, hopefully if the discussions go well with the fire board, that'll be a fire board issue to deal with and not this council. All in favor? It's carried. Five, uh, nine, nine point one. Result of the annual grant of $4,000 to the Swan Valley Historical Museum included in the 2023 financial plan be approved for payment. Moved by Councillor Medwood, second by Councillor White. Discussion, Councillor Medwood. Uh, yes, I'd like to offer a friendly amendment to have it indicate here that upon receipt of the 2022 
financial statements, which is part of our current policy that they will receive the money. Uh, Council Baldwin. I would like that explained one more time, please. I'd like that. to have it amended so that it says the money will basically be released after receipt of the 2022 financials, which is required in our policy, but they provide the previous year's financials, which would be 2022. And once they hand those in, then the funds are released. I would probably disagree with that. I guess my thoughts on that are that policies and procedures are like a, a guideline for this council. Not everything goes as really to what policy and procedures are. This has been done for years. I do command that we have moved forward, that we are looking at these policy and procedures, and CAO Pool is on that right now, but I said I don't think that we should put the museum in that sort of situation at this point in time. Councillor uh, W. Mayor Memorial. Just a, a clarification or a, a point of order. Um, I'm under the. Can a, can a mover actually make an amendment to the motion that they just moved? I'm not disagreeing with the amendment. The mover, the mover, the mover has to speak in, in, in favor the, of the motion they just passed. The initial, um, yes, has to speak in favor of the resolution. What's done is done, but uh, but you if you are moving uh, a resolution, uh, you have the opportunity to speak, but you have to speak in favor of the resolution. Um, but we can look into that. What's done is done here already, but we'll, we have new rules, so uh, we're watching that carefully. Uh, Councilor White. Just a, just a comment in general. Sometimes I, I could concur completely with Councilor Bobby. We're going to do it. We know we're going to do it. In the interim, we're putting the historical society and other entities similar to them by putting these things on hold. They don't get the funds, and they don't get to run their, their organizations as perhaps they would like to. So if we've agreed that we're going to do this, let's get them the money, and if we have to tighten up the priorities in the process, which I have no problem with, but short term, uh, I don't think we should put the historical society on hold. Okay, further discussion? Councilman Edward. I respectfully disagree. Council passes policies, bylaws, and procedures into place as something we are to be accountable to. And if we're not accountable to them and we're choosing when we do or don't follow them, then that puts our integrity into question. And it takes into take into account what is the point? of having a policy and our bylaw in place if they're just guidelines that we choose whether we do or don't follow them and to what extent we do or don't follow them. So how are we held accountable to our seat here at the table if we're not willing to support back and be accountable to the policies and bylaws we put in place? If we don't agree with them, which I'm not saying I agree with this policy, but it is the policy we have in place, there is a process and procedure to go through to change that policy. And while it's in motion, we still have to uphold the current policy that is in place. So I would like to move that we amend the resolution to include upon receipt of the 2022 financials, which is meeting the policy criteria. Okay, so do we have a seconder? So there is no seconder. So then I'm going to ask the question. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 9.2. Resolved that the annual grant of $1,000 to the Swan Valley Association for Community Living, included in the 2023 financial plan, be approved for payment. Moved by Councillor Medwood, second by Councillor Bobbick. Discussion, Councillor Medwood, are you speaking in favor of the resolution? Yes, I am. They've provided their financials. Okay. They've met the criteria. Okay. Uh, any further discussion? Councillor White. 
I appreciate Councilor Medwin's concern that how, how, do, how do we keep our integrity. I suspect if you're the speaking, community doesn't you're like those the previous decisions. resolution, Councilor. I'm sorry. Question yet, please. You're speaking on the previous uh, resolution. I am speaking in favor of it. Yeah. Okay. Further discussion. Go ahead. Relative to the discussion on ACL, <coughs> if the community doesn't like the decisions we made when we be creative, we can become very accountable on election year. Okay. For the discussion, all in favor? Carry. <coughs> Okay, 10.1. Resolve the accounts as follows, but hereby approve for payment. General accounts checks number 30432 to number 30481, totaling $206,005.25 as listed on Schedule A. Payroll accounts checks number 5329 to number 5332, totaling $102,581.32 as listed on Schedule B. Direct deposits payments totaling $795 as listed on Schedule C and direct deposit payments totaling $3,552 and 79 cents as listed on Schedule D. Moved by Councillor Medwood, seconded by Councillor Powell. Discussion, Councillor Medwood. I have questions. Am I allowed to speak to those right now or does somebody else need to speak first? Uh, you're good to go. Okay. On the explanation sheet, number 30433, the Associated Engineering Saskatchewan Limited, the 2977-98 water plant troubleshooting and programming, is that just standard maintenance or was there issues? Uh, that was some programming that was done with regard to the <coughs> control building uh, to get that monitor working. With the <coughs> And check number 30438, Gardwine North, 4926.54, Shipping Wolseley and Clear Tech. Is that literally just the bill for the transportation and the shipping, or does that include the cost of the chemicals that they hauled? Uh, that would have been. Uh for Centennial Drive, so that would have been the cost of freight because it was a lot of pipe and materials that we brought in with that. Okay. Um, are we by chance um, doing cost comparisons at the time of shippings just to see if there's a better one to be had at the time? Uh, we have in the past. I'll mention that to Jordan when we're shipping something big to make sure we check. And then 30439, Guardian Securities, Annual Alarm Monitoring Arena and Fire Hall. Um, we had asked in the past, It's we have different alarm companies or systems for different buildings. Are we... <coughs> are we up for renewal? Are we any closer to knowing whether or not we're up for renewal? And yeah, we're, we're hoping to get an RFP out uh, this fall. Okay. Yeah. And just for really, I have to be scroll down here. Uh, 30462, Jeans Telecom, 1318.75 for radio equipment for public works machinery. Is this something new, a replacement, or? Uh, that's a replacement for some radios that went down. Okay. And my last one is 30480 Wolseley, Canada, the 13,578.45 for water and sewer parts and materials. This is just. Your time has expired. I'll let them answer the question, though. Uh, yeah, that's for uh, assorted water and sewer parts for uh, repairs. Okay. <coughs> Further discussion? Oh, sorry. Counselor. I just had one quick question uh, with regard to the hydro bill, uh, 30465, I believe it was. Um, everything's listed. The only thing the aquatic center isn't. So I was just wondering, does that come on a separate one or? CFO Gadita? 
I think it does. I, yes, uh, the Aquatic Center is a separate bill. It's not part of this combined bill. Hmm. But it doesn't come at the same time as this other bill? No, it comes at a different time. Hmm. I, I guess we could look into uh, combining the ones that aren't part of the combined bill. Mm -hmm. Everything in one place, yeah. Okay. Further discussion? Yeah. All in favor? It's carried. 10.2. Whereas the town of Swan River received an estate bequest in the amount of $5,000 designated to the town of Swan River Parks Department in 2022 fiscal year. And whereas the council of the town of Swan River believes it would be appropriate to use the bequest for a playground installation to be completed in the 2023 fiscal year. And whereas the 2022 fiscal year had a surplus of $212,500. $49.86 that was transferred to the tax stabilization reserve. Therefore, it reserve, therefore be it resolved that $5,000 be transferred from the tax stabilization reserve fund to the general operating fund to be used for the playground installations. Be it further resolved that the appropriate rec recognition of the request be posted and sincere appreciation be expressed to the deceased family. Moved by Councillor uh, Boychuk, seconded by Councillor <coughs> Ledwood. Discussion, uh, Councillor Ledwood or uh, Boychuk, do you have anything to open with? Okay. Any further discussion? Councillor Ledwood? I think this is a great use of the funds, and I'm sure his daughter <coughs> will appreciate it. Okay. Further discussion? All in favor? Okay. 11.1. Result of the bylaw 7 2023 being a bylaw of the town of Swan River to regulate indemnities for the council be read a first time. Moved by Councillor Medwood, seconded by Councillor Bobbick. Discussion? Councillor Medwood. I have a few questions. Am I allowed to start with that? Uh, yeah. Are you in favor of the resolution? You're speaking in favor of the resolution? Well, I have questions about the okay. bylaw. Okay, go ahead. And the decision paper. Um, just give me one second to open. Uh, so, my first one being, it mentions in here, the Schedule B and the recommendation for an annual maximum. Has there been annual maximums in the past? No. So we have nothing to base it on? Uh, in the past, the bylaw did not include uh, committee meetings, so they were all included in your annual indemnity. We've included now for council to have the ability to claim for their community meetings, so it is typical in our municipalities to put an annual maximum on indemnities. <clears throat> the reason why I'm asking is because the first line is annual maximum per year for out-of-town meetings at 1496, which is basically eight days. That is where we would basically be putting in for, say, if we attend AMMs. And if we attend, is that the right? Uh, I believe we define. Because the first cap says annual maximum per year for out of town meetings. So would AMM not qualify in that line entry? I believe we have the AMM listed that it is it wouldn't be included. So the it's annual section delegation. Yeah, the annual maximum should be for committee meetings that are outside of the limits. <clears throat> Sorry, I don't I don't know what like the back of my hand. No, that's okay. That's why I'm asking questions because um, 
I'm just thinking if this, this is the first reading, so we'll have more time to go through it also. Yeah, uh, well, I, I did go through it. So this is one of my questions, because if that first line accounts for AMMs, if you go to the fall and you go to the spring, that's seven days right there. If you attend G8 meetings, you're now 8.5 days roughly. So we've already exceeded it with just those two types of meetings alone. So that's why I'm just kind of wondering is this something we're going to monitor if it's never been put in place to make sure we're paid fairly, I guess? But. The, the answer to the question, it was drafted to not include the AMM, so that it, it was for specific meetings outside. If it doesn't state that now, we'll make sure that it does for a second, but it, it shouldn't mention that in here in the details. I just need to find and, it. And your time has expired, so that gives anybody a, another opportunity to speak, so for the discussion. Go ahead. Uh, just for clear curiosity's sake, uh, like with the annual maximums for the out of town and maximum, how what percentage or how did you come up to that figure? I'm not disagreeing with the figures. So I just want to know how. We we use an average of other municipalities. Okay. Uh, bylaws. So it wasn't a percentage of the annual indemnity. Was this a percentage, uh, an average from other municipalities? Average from other municipalities. Okay. Yeah. I'm done. For the discussion, Councilor Med. Oh, sorry, Council White. You alluded to special meetings in there. How do you define that? A, a special meeting is called uh, by the mayor. Uh, we have them whenever the mayor calls them. They're special meetings of council. They're not regular. They're not cows. There's. Uh, could it be a special meeting that extends beyond uh, part of your job description within here? For example, medical services meet in the school for a half a day recruiting. Would that be a special meeting? No. So the, the, the special meeting is to pass a boring bylaw in order to meet the provincial regulations. We, we've had the money for the reading project. We've had a number of special meetings called when council needs to meet in order to pass a resolution. In, in the previous bylaw, council was unable to claim those meetings because it was included in your annual indemnity. We're now allowing you to claim for those meetings. So your regular meetings, you cannot claim. You get that as part of your annual indemnity. Now we're drafting so that when you call a special meeting, you can claim above your annual indemnities for sure. those meetings. Right. Thank you. But also to answer that question on your medical, on your medical uh, recruitment meetings, those would be claimable as well. If you would. You could claim for those okay. as well. Thank you. Further discussion? Okay, Councilor Medwood. I'm not necessarily opposed to the caps. I'm just um, looking for further understanding. Um, it's, I mean, based on your summary, we're not certainly in the top per capita of pay by any means. But at the same time, with my limited time on council, I know I have had to forgo, if I don't attend my regular job, I don't get paid for other uh, council members None of us, this is our, none of us are full-time job, but others are potentially taking bank time and or vacation time in order to attend these types of things to do our part for council. So I'm just looking to see that what we put into place is something that we can work with and it can be feasible for people to sit at the table and have a seat and do this job, I guess. So. <coughs> That's all I was looking for is some, a little more understanding of where the caps are at and where they fall in, kind of what falls under which cap. So maybe we could bring it to another cow. Yeah, to there would still have to be a little bit more discussion about this, I think. We wrap our heads around it a little bit better. Okay, further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Okay. We don't. Um, we still don't have that member's privilege on there. That's going to come out of camera, then, right? I can have Resolved in pursuance of sections one fifty two three of the municipal act, council go in the committee and close the meeting to the public. Uh, we had uh, HR. Moved by Councilor Bobic, seconded by Councilor Medwood. Discussion. All in favor? It's carried. Uh, items of, uh, number 15, items arising out of camera, 15.1. Resolved that the administration rescinds the grants 
and donation policy approved October the 4th, 2011. The in-kind table and shared donation approved August 6, 2019. And any other pertinent uh, directions on grants and donations from the Town of Swan River. And be it further resolved that any request to the Town of Swan River come to Council on an individual basis for the time being until an appropriate policy be drafted and approved by Council. Moved by... Just a correction that, that should not say administration, sorry, it should say resolve the Council recently. <laughs> okay, so we see that resolve that council rescind. Okay, so moved by uh, Deputy Mayor Morio, seconded by Councillor Bobic. Uh, discussion, Deputy Mayor Morio. Uh, resolution self explanatory. Okay, further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Okay, number 16, members privilege. And we're going to kick this off with Councillor Bobbitt because it's on the board. I've got nothing at this point. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, I strongly, yeah, I like the member privilege time. Uh, it works well at the watershed. The, the things come up through the conversations that you can bring forward. Uh, one of the things that I thought came to me, we spoke in the cemetery and the problems that we had there with uh, breaking enters and stuff. Has there been any uh, thought into running a telephone line in there? Or just for security reasons, just a thought. Uh, I can speak to Mr. Harvey tomorrow. But, but yeah, I, I, I can't say that it's ever been planned. Okay. No. Uh, other than that, I'll go back to Mayor McKenzie's thought. We're all strong minded people, we all have opinions. Sometimes I may hurt somebody's feeling, and I'll apologize if you're prior to it. Uh, I speak bluntly, and I more move the dirt and get out of my way. So. But I think member privilege time will let people bring stuff up that cues <coughs> in over. Uh, Council White can do it. Public service announcements. It'll be all good. Thank you. Okay, very good, Councilor Madden. Um, I don't really have much, but um, coming from a chamber perspective, has uh, the Economic Development Committee, who oversees the chamber from a council perspective, put thought into a float for the parade and whether one will be happening. And, um, yeah. What's the question? Has the e Economic Development rise? Committee? No, the Economic Development Committee, I believe, uh, let me get my little paper out so I can get the proper title. Oh, you're talking about our, our, our the committee, uh, yeah. No, I'd say the answer to that is no. The, uh, here, Environment and Economic Development Services Committee, who is responsible for regional industrial development, tourism, chamber of commerce, <coughs> uh, which would be Powell, Jacobson, and Boychuk, and... Powell and Jacobson are the representatives for the chamber. So have you put any thought into whether the town will be represented in the parade this year? The town of Swanover has a float in the parade. You guys are doing it? I believe so. I don't know. We, it all depends on if we have the volunteers to do it. Okay. Because I'm just following up from a chamber perspective because I'm on the events committee. So I'll be... We don't who, have, who do I address a follow-up communication or phone call to to uh, confirm? I don't think there's really anything to confirm. Once, if, if we have uh, anybody that's volunteering to be putting a float together, then they'll enter the float. Otherwise, then it may not happen. Hopefully it does, but it all is based on, on volunteers, as you know. I know, but who, who do I follow up with? Why do you need to follow up? Because I'm on the events committee for the parade for, but from the chamber. Enter, but if they enter the parade, then you'll mm -hmm. know, right? That the pre register. Yes, and we've. So, how much time do they have to register? The 15th. Okay, the 15th. so we still have some time left okay. to register. Okay. Okay. And answer your question. I, I sure. Okay. I'm just putting it up there. Go ahead. Appreciate your comments sincerely. Uh, Glenn taught me a really valuable lesson. I'm, I'm a very competitive guy. I don't like losing anything, particularly when you pick a number. And as I've evolved, and Glenn taught me in the first five, six years of council, I would get home disappointed because they, council, didn't like what I had brought forward. They don't like me. 
Glenn said, no, Dwayne, they didn't like the concept. It's got nothing to do with you as a person. So it took me quite a while to learn that a council's not going to go with everything that I bring forward. Why would they? They're all individual. But I have to learn to say, they disagree with the principle, suck it up, buttercup. I had to, then I had to move on. And I think that's imperative. It was so important for my personality. Uh, just throw that idea out. We've talked about it in the past, and we've got some time now to think about a student council member. Is somebody from the school being a student councillor? Throw that back out for another day. Yeah, you know what? I've been uh, in the past year, I'll answer that question, but the, uh, or bring that up, but um, school division, and I've been working with uh, um, Jackie Medinsky Arp, who then forwarded me to uh, uh, Aaron Brown, because she felt that that was the best department to bring um, a student out of. They asked all the students, none of the students wanted to. So they'll do the same thing this fall. But we are pursuing it. I, I, every time I see Aaron, or Aaron, I'll just say, hey, like I need a student. And uh, if they get a volunteer, you can't force one to come, but uh, they need, we need a volunteer. We could all not show you. Oh, absolutely. Okay. You're next. Um, well, I think that was posed to me before about the parade, and I just got through Canada Day. Um, I seem to be on a committee that has a lot of extra stuff going on. Um, I am away the whole week prior to and the week after rodeo, so I can do the entry. I can potentially, if, do we have funds set aside for decorating of a float or anything like no, that? it was all done by, it was either Communities in Bloom, the Reforest Committee did it one year. It's all volunteer. The town yeah. did not do anything. So, yeah. In so terms I mean, of putting wages into a parade, no. No. Public works guys maybe like they would hook the truck up, get the trailer ready. Yeah. Things like that. But in terms of decorating and going out to get the decorations and money for whatever candies. No. So your communities in bloom represent <laughs> Can you reach out to them and see if they're interested in, in doing I remember that Council again? Friesen doing that, yeah. Yeah. For the last few years the town and the communities in bloom have jointly had a float. Yeah. So see, and then I can help while I'm here. Like I don't mind doing I'll do the paperwork for an entry and whatever and if there's anything else you need and Make a Last okay. time I spoke with Phil Friesen to ask for an update on Communities of Bloom, she said all was good. They probably wouldn't meet until next year. Okay. Well, I can reach out. So I have no idea if she has interested. plans for, for a float. Okay. Yeah. You're next. Um, no, well, good meeting. Uh, again, congratulations to uh, Mayor McKenzie for his uh, honorary lifetime membership in the AMM. Um, he was the mayor uh, when I first came on council and he taught me a lot through the processes. Uh, there was issues we agreed on, there was issues we disagreed on, but as uh, uh, both uh, Council Bobbitt and Council White said, it was we're on one voice, one opinion, and when it comes down to the resolution, we have to go with the majority. And just to come to Bobbick's uh, point with the phone line to the cemetery, probably your best bet would be uh, a point-to-point Wi-Fi connection, probably to the town office, or just like the sewer lifts, to a point of connection. So, and that's all I got. Councilor Powell. Mom. I'll come yeah. back to you, Councilor Bocha. <coughs> I just think it's really important that we, you know, we we, we get along. Um, it's very we uh, we all respect each other, and we all yes, we all have different opinions, um, and uh, but we all have to put those forth and um, realize that yes, um, I take I really I have a lot, a lot of respect and a lot of admiration for our administration. I've um, spent a lot of time with the, the committees that I'm on. And I definitely need their guidance, and I really respect that I'm able to definitely call um, with some of the committees. I, I probably spend, I probably call Derek every other day in regards to you know some of the committee I'm on right now, and spend a lot of time with it, and even Mr. Gineo. So I just just want to say that I respect that, but we also have to respect each other, and you know it's it's getting along, and uh, 
and just we all have different opinions. But um, yeah. Okay. You're back on. Did I go? Oh, yeah, you go. I'm old and deaf. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for helping me along there. No, I was just I was just gonna bring up the point he was saying a Wi-Fi to Wi-Fi connection, then that would work with that CCTV camera program to potentially connect in and we'd be able to put up that type of thing in there, which we just invested forty thousand dollars in. So uh, make a point of letting them know that that's a place where we'd like to. That's the second time our own has been still. Yeah, mm -hmm. and do we get insurance for that? Like, uh, it well, we, we, it'll become a it. challenge at some point in time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. By putting a camera then will help mitigate mm -hmm. and making the insurance company happy that we're... Right, you have something. to take proactive measures, right? You can't just right. say, oh, I got broke into and do nothing. Oh, I got broke into and do nothing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no. Not a so we want a camera on the cemetery shed. So that's yeah. everything for you then? No, I would like to say thank you to administration too, because I know uh, through that whole arena, uh, you probably talked to me more than you ever wanted to. <laughs> well, no, I think, I, th I think we're on the right track, to be honest. Even with the Canada Day stuff, we want our rec department to say, hey, council, we're putting in a float this year. We don't, like, the answer that I give of, no, we've never done it. Like, I don't like that, but we, we're we just not there yet. We need the right leader. We'll get there. And, and following up on that, um, the one thing I did talk to Derek about and, and the one thing I was looking forward to maybe implementing with our, even council and, and the staff and administration is kind of taking the model from the credit union where in their annual um, reviews have a component for volunteerism and, and community involvement. I like that. And I really think that's a great, especially for town employees and council. <coughs> I mean, it's one thing to get voluntold we're on these committees and go with what you might not have, you know, any particular interest in at the start, but you learn, right? Um, I think it's another thing, and I, I think if we can incorporate staff with, with uh, that and, and light that fire with everyone that, hey, like, a couple people can make a really big difference, and, and it's exciting to watch and see how that spark turns into something bigger. Like, hopefully, you know, yeah. Huh. There you go. All right, well, I'll just round it off, I guess, um, for myself. We had a good meeting tonight. You know, having uh, uh, Mayor McKenzie here uh, tonight was, was good. He's, you know, obviously over the years, being with, uh, with Glenn, he's, you know, he become friends too at the same time. But I do remember a few times when he scolded and, and called a point of order on you. And, uh, and it happens, and you kind of like go, oh, and you, you're kind of embarrassed by the whole thing because you think, holy man, it just caught me on doing something, and you can think, like, okay, I don't want to you know, do that again. But, but you know what, it's all in stride, you know, it just you know, teaches you to you know, be a better person at this table. And if we learn to respect each other and, and, and uphold that, it just makes it better. And I have to remind you, like, we are, you know, maybe a little over halfway into our first year of the term. Uh, the new counselors, you have so much to learn. You can't learn it in six months. You're not going to learn it in a year. You're not going to learn it in two years. By the time you get your, to your fourth year, a lot of the, the lights are going to start coming on, and you're going to go, wow. And you're going to think back to the first days that you sat at this table. <laughs> and that's normal, because you're not full-time counselors. You're part-time. You're here to do a, a few things, you know, pass, you know, resolutions and go to committee meetings and all that. But, uh, you know, and, and some can put more time into it than others, you know, that, that's, a, that's a given. Uh, but the thing is, don't expect much more than that because it takes a long time. There's so much to learn. You think about the stuff that, you know, we talk about the budget, you know, and, and the different pieces and the elements of the budget. I could probably... I'll be the first to admit, there's even some pieces in the budget that I still don't even understand. And go back to it and you think, oh, okay, that's what it was. Or even when we had different things that happened with you know, water, you know, when we had our, our uh, breakdown with our, our wells a number of years ago. Their administration was in, sitting in this room and we're having these conversations about uh, wells and, and, they, and they're, they're, they're just verbally talking and I'm thinking, going, okay, what's he saying? And then I'm kind of, well, okay, okay, nobody else is asking any questions. So obviously, all these guys are a lot smarter than I am. 
So then after we were done, and I had to be the spokesperson for council because the mayor was gone away, and then I walked into the room, I said to, the, to Mr. Poole, I said, you need to show me on a piece of paper on the wall right now, how <laughs> yes, does this I work? You know, and, and, and he did, and I understood it. I was able to explain it, you know, but, you know, it, it, just, it just takes time, you know, and, and, and it, it'll, it'll get there. But, you know, there's also a lot of frustrating things along the way, too, but uh, you have to, as much as it's frustrating and all that, you have to also spend some time and enjoy this, too, because as much as you might think this is not the, the greatest uh, time spent, um, you know what, it's, it's, it's going to get there because, um, you know what, we've met some really amazing people sitting mm -hmm. around this table, too that have become really good friends where you may have never been friends with them if you hadn't been. So it's a, it's not a bad place. Or some friends ran you to this table. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> anyway, so with that, I will close <coughs> off. And uh, yeah, so resolve this regular meeting of council and I'll be adjourned at 9.25 p.m. Moved by Councilor Borkshuk, second by Councilor Medwood. All in favor? Carried. We're adjourned.